my name's Ellie. Welcome to my channel. More makeup today. It's kind of flitting back and forth between overcast and nice, and so it's also cold again. I wanted to just do easy makeup, so we're going to do the Clinique Cosmetics RKO palette, and I just kind of want to do, like, the yellow and the orange and the gold and the bronze and make just a really easy, boring look. So, I'm going to start with, ooh, what am I going to start with? Should have planned that. Um, Erosion, the like orangey one. <clears throat> I'm tired. I decided that I'm far enough in my practice for the splits to like start trying to do it on pillows and stuff to cover the last couple inches and sit in it for long periods of time. Uh, I'm not. The pillow's compressed further than I thought, so I still ended up holding myself up for most of it. And, uh, it was some ouch. Like, not that I injured myself, just, like, more pressure than I'd been putting on that stretch. Uh, these mats build up very quickly, so I'm just kind of, like, tapping ever so slightly and then putting a tiny amount on. Cuz I'm I'm closer in my scissor stretch than I am in like my straddle stretch probably because my scissor I have to use my body weight for the stretch and the straddle I'm able to just kind of like sit with my ankles pressed open by like the couch it's uh it was very different I have a whole goal to like get there by a certain point in quarantine. But I also don't really want to like rip anything or injure myself by stretching too much too fast, which is a thing. I did have a tendon injury in one of my hips from the last time I tried to <laughs> get really good at the splits and I never quite got there. And I was probably stretching too far. But I haven't had to deal with that in a while. Knock on wood. Okay, now I'm going to pop in a mix of Nomad and Erosion to kind of floof out the edges. Again with very tiny amounts of product. I feel like when I do get to being able to do a proper split either direction, I'm going to be so excited about the fact that I can do it, I'm just going to do it a bunch and never lose it. It has no practical purpose other than I've just always wished I was able to do the splits. I've gotten really close. I just never quite got the last few inches on either of them. I've gotten way better on like um, my forward bends and stuff. So that's progress. So now I'm going to pop in just Nomad to kind of floof edges and make for a nice hopefully well blown out thing I think it looks nice there's a sneak peek of a new Anastasia Norvina palette I have complicated feelings 
because it's one of the color stories I like more, but there's one like lime greeny yellow shade that doesn't match, in my opinion, the rest of the palette. And it's kind of ruining things for me because I'm like, oh man, you're so close to a really good palette and you fucked it up by throwing in a random limey yellow shade in a pinky purple. Like, not like pinky purple and warm tones. Like, it's almost more mauve pinky purple plus random shade. And I don't, I don't get... I'm sure there's ways you can use it that would be really pretty, but it's just not something I think of and it doesn't seem to tie into the rest of the palette and picking up Artifact now. From the people I was talking to, it looked like everybody was like, okay, I like it, except for that one fucking lime shade, what the fuck? Why is that in there? That does not match the rest of the color story. I'm like, okay, it's not just me. Which made me wonder how easy it would be to rearrange the shades. So I took over, I picked up my Norvina 2, I think I have the 2. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is definitely like, the shades aren't named, they're just rows and columns. It would be so nice if these were the kinds of things like the Natasha Denona where they could pop out and you could just rearrange into your own really, really pretty thing. And I wanted to rearrange the one I had and see how many similar shades there were, but its I don't think it's magnetic. I was not able to get a tool between the pan and the side and there's no clear way about how to pull it out. I am borderline tempted to order that aggressive, um, is it Illamasqua? Maybe. There's a brand that shell sells square shaped pans. They have like the Freedom palette where you can mix and match um, these big square singles, and since their magnetic system, the magnet they use for their palettes is so strong, they sell a depotting magnet that's aggressive. And I kind of want to get that and see if I can rip out the shades and then rearrange them as I want. If they're held in magnetically or glued. Because there's no, like, pinholes on the back like most, um, like, actually. Like... This palette. So they didn't put the names on the actual palette because there's these little squares on the back where you could pop the shades out. I could rearrange this any way I wanted. I could put all the warmers on one side, all the cools on the other. I could do a rainbow transition. I could do any rearranging of this palette that I wanted to make it the best layout for me. And I was thinking how that would be really, really nice for the Norvina palettes, the big ones, to be able to cluster together like the shades you want to use or the shades that you're more likely to use together, or put some things that you for don't really think about using together together in the palette so you can make better color stories and more complicated looks. And now I'm really sad that I can't easily rearrange that palette because if I could easily rearrange that palette, I would potentially buy the new Norvina one, pop out that lime, and put in just literally any other shade or rearrange them and like hide it in the corner as the I don't really want to fuck with this shade shade. So that's where my ridiculous quarantine brain's at. I'm gonna put sundial on the inner half. I feel like when I open this up I see so much of the pink and purple and blue that I forget that there's a really nice super neutral shade combination in here. A nice easy goldy coppery look. Oh. 
I'm going to take a little bit of artifact and run it on there. It's not doing anything, but I'm going to do it on the other side just because. Balance. Actually, I think it's doing something. Because it's slightly darker than the mats. Ah. It's something. Now we're going to take some of my brush for it. None of them are behaving. Lovely. Some of Sulfur, which is the really, really light yellowy gold shade. Oh, that's such a pretty combination. And if I had thought about it, I would have popped these out and put them in a nice little order so you could see the quint, I guess, that I'm working off of. What did I just drop? Don't know. Can't pick it up if I don't know. Okay, one quick little pop through the crease. And that's done. Now we can go on to the rest of the face. Such a nice mix. I just wish I knew the names better. I haven't moved them because I'm worried I would not know how to talk about the shade names, even though I don't use it in videos that often. Unless I'm pulling in like one shade and I could turn it around and look at it. Whatever. I have to do the rest of my face, which means I have to knock the powder off. Uh, we are using a different bronzer than my Franken bronzer because it seemed to have oh no some type of weird hard pan so I repressed it without actually pressing it crushed it up put the liquids in and like put it in the pan but didn't like press press it to see if that would help with everything so we're gonna do my danger bronzer this is tawny from Anastasia Beverly Hills, as you can see, it's a bit deeper than what I've been using, and I remember this being very pigmented, so we're going to try it with the scary brush by just, like, pressing it in and going from there. Because uh, a little bit goes a long way. It is a good shade for me, and when we get back to it, I'm going to really appreciate how long this product will last me. But until then, it is such a pigmented, blendy formula that it just kind of literally... I will show you in the last bit how I'm picking up the product and hopefully you can tell how lightly I'm touching my face so as not to get too much of anything. So by tapping in I literally mean that's, that's all I'm using. And I use this for a very long time before hitting pan. I'm 
we'll just take the leftover bits on my nose. I can't be trusted to pick up just enough for that, but it's it's a really good shade. And it's a ton of product, and it blends really well. I just have to be so careful. Bronzers go one of two ways. Well, in application. Either it's something where like you can really dig your, pan your brush in and pick up all sorts of product, and it still barely shows up, which I appreciate because I'm corpsey colored. We're going to try and use the last little corner of my Frankenblot blush, which I should be able to pick up with safety. We'll start there. Or you have bronzers like this where if I'm not very careful with it, I will have just like straight up mud streaks on my face. But I do appreciate that bronzer for being the thing that got me into bronzer. I had them and they were all too orange, or too deep, aka I basically didn't know. I had samples of things or like things that came in palettes. I didn't have anything I'd picked out for myself. And I finally saw one that was like rosy toned instead of orange toned. So I bought it and figured it out. And now I'm more confident in picking things and have used up several of the ones that I didn't know how to use previously. It's really hard to get the brush in to get the product in the corner. As you saw when I was trying to do the bronzer with this same system. Okay. That is the last of that. I have to clean off the pan and then have another free compact for putting stuff in. Yay! Oh, that's right. I was going to blend my blush and bronzer again. Oh, I'm gonna have to pick a highlight. I didn't think that far ahead. We'll think about it while doing brows. We'll have a plan. I'm really excited for the shade of that bronzer, like that's a swatch of it there. It's a good tone for me. I just, something must have either gotten in it when I mixed it together or something must have gone wrong when I tried to press it. It was getting hard pan, like immediately. And it fell out of the compact, so. I was going to need to do it again anyway. I just want it to work. I want it to work so I can use it because I'm very excited about my little Franken plan for using up the several bronzers that are way too warm for me.
trying for slightly more natural brows. I'm working on it. I have the same issue with all sorts of stuff that I'm panning, where I try to use more product to go through it faster. I end up with brows that I'm not the happiest with, when I could just use it with a little more reserve and have better brows, and then I don't do that, and I get pretty aggressive brows. I also could shape my brows and probably have better brows, but I don't have the energy for properly shaping my brows. They'll have to do. I think I'm gonna take Hot Mama and pop that on my cheeks and then layer that with vanilla quartz. That's my plan. So I want something nice and warm, but a little, a little fun. Hot Mama is a good base for all sorts of stuff. Vanilla Quartz has a bit of a white cast, and putting Hot Mama underneath that helps it look a bit more natural. I think, at least. Okay, setting spray. I feel like if I could guarantee that that magnet would pull out the shades the way I want in the Norvina palette, I would get it, and I would have a lot of fun doing that. But I also don't want to just buy one thing from one brand just to test the theory. We have other problems going on. I have, no, I have like a magnet for those um, cat eye nail polishes, but I don't think that's strong enough to pull that out of there. Because hm. I like the shades in that palette so far, I just, I would like to be able to rearrange them and compare some fun stuff. feel like it would be interesting for me which I could I could do it with an editing app I could just take a picture of the palette copy and paste and move them around but I think it would be fun for use to be able to see duplicates the shade depth variation stuff like that But I've also started seeing all those people rearranging their Natasha Denona palettes to make their custom best 
shade mixes, and that's probably also making me want to move stuff around. I like the idea of being able to mix and match shades in my existing palettes to make new color stories, especially since I already mix and match colors from them. I just didn't have to have all the palettes out. But I'm not quite at the willing to potentially damage my palettes by trying to depot things that are glued in stage. If everything was like the Natasha Denona where they're just a made palette but held in by magnets, I would have some fun. I would make some stuff. But that is probably one of the reasons that Natasha Denona hikes up their prices is that type of packaging is more expensive to make than just gluing some stuff into something. The mix and match options though. That sounds awesome. But I am too worried about destroying things when I depot stuff. And I like the packaging. A lot of things when you depot them you have to kind of break up the packaging. I would like to be able to take them out, preserve the packaging, do what I wanted with the shades, and then potentially put them back in the packaging. That would be my preferred option. Because I have some palettes that had things glued in, um, like my, my balm palette, those shades were glued in, and they, they have, have been falling out for a while. Which is still a danger with magnetic packaging, it's just not one I've had to come across. I've had items fall out of a magnetic palette, but not with a horrible end yet. Again, with the knocking on wood. Oh, I need a lip plan now. Do I have a plan? Nope. Nope, that's too warm. We'll use my nude. We'll go with the nude. Because it's lunchtime and I'm about to take this lip off to eat anyway. And my whole goal was to use shades when I didn't know what I wanted to use one of my panning shades. Whereas rosewood is a little much for this, but true love means is nice. It can be kind of hard to see where I have and haven't gotten this because it is so close to the color of my lips. Uh, okay, finished look. Very lazy, easy, warm toned look for a lazy day that can't decide if it's going to be sunny or overcast. Thank you all for watching. Um, if you have any 
inside information about the ABH Norvina palettes, like these biggins. If you know that I can get these out with a magnet, I would like to know, because I, I, I'm willing to go get a magnet, but I thought I'd be able to like stick something between the pans and pry them out if they were magnetic. Instead, I just gouged the yellow one a little bit. But I feel like this would be a really cool color story to see laid out with the similar shades, like all the neutrals together, the warm tones, the cool tones, the shimmers. I have curiosity. But I'm gonna go make myself a sandwich, see how my weird cooking plans are working out. I tried to make like a sun-dried tomato paste so I could make like a, I don't know, I had a plan. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I have mozzarella. I have bread. I now have, hopefully, a sun-dried tomato paste and I can make some type of grilled sandwich as a goal. We'll see what happens. At least my eyeshadow turned out awesome. And we'll find out tomorrow if this repressing without force helps with my issues. Because it's just going to sit there and dry because I pressed it this morning like an idiot. If I pressed it last night, I would know now. Said I'm just gonna try not to poke it, because that will ruin my plan by poking it too early. I'm gonna go. Thank you all for watching. I will see you later. Let me know if you have messed with the shades in any of the Norvina palettes. Are they magnetic? Can I just get a good magnet and pop them out and then move them around? What's the deal? I have questions. I have concerns. I have plans if I can do that. But also since it's super new, I'm not really committed to like getting a candle and trying to do that because I haven't done that before. And it makes me very nervous. I'll see you guys later. Bye!